be able to read the gauge is what I'm saying. It's kind of like when you're driving. Okay, I'm going to Nashville. And I got what? It's down there on that last little line. I ain't getting far. Same as this. If it's in that red area, don't even bother what? You get them a full one. Because you're going to be in the middle of giving a treatment or drawing a blood gas or something else, and they're going to be calling you. Mr. Jones is out of oxygen. You see, the departments don't have oxygen. X-ray may not have oxygen piped in. Plus, there may be four people in front of them, and they got to sit in the lobby and watch. And what that will happen? It's going to run dry. Just like if you're driving in Nashville, you're going to be on the side of the water. You do it all the time, don't you? don't want to push it on someone who needs what? What? <laughs> it's the truth. You run dry, they need that oxygen to what? Keep their, keep them going. So let's put it, how much did you say? So let's put them up too. How long is that going to last? Uh-huh, that's what you got to know how to do. Turned off. 
I'll turn this one way. Where's my wrist going? Towards the lefty loosey, righty tight. But I looked at the gauge and it's still showing what? Right. What I need to do? I gotta bleed that off. So what? Is that needle dropping down? Right. Now there's no pressure in there. The same with this. I got a one. What's that needle? Because where's the pressure in there? Okay. Now I can what? Take my thing off. But you never take it off when it's on. Take it off when it's on. Take it off when it's on, it's, it's going to what? Start spewing. Because how much pressure is in there? This one had 2,000. But a bull is going to have what? 2,200, right? You know you're going to be using the plumbing. That's just it. Now this one, I turned off also. Let me show you a little trick. This is called an E-bridge. That don't want to come in, will it? Only on what? The e tool. Everything after the flow meter is what? That's PSI. Pressure is less than 200 or what? GIS. What are the three systems? What's on the left? Nitrous oxide and what else is there? Oxygen. You don't want big them. You don't have them unchained. You ever play dominoes? So what would happen if one fell? I'll tell you a story. I remember that Baptist hospital downtown probably not gone. You know, if they go up. One of those fell off. The skin broke off, and it was like a missile. Went to a concrete wall. How much pressure is in it? So, respect the water. You drop that on your foot. That fell over. That's serious. And there's an advantage to the small one. You can lay it walk flat. You can put it in that gurney. Look on 125, it's showing you how to 
Note 26 is showing you the cylinder markings. How often did they test them? And they overfill them. They have to be checked. So there's a, a stamp on here that's going to tell you how often they're checked. Okay. The ownership mark is on there. Okay. Who regulates the transportation of them? Okay. Who regulates the purity of the gas? Okay. Is oxygen a drug? have to be prescribed. Yeah. So is it a drug? Yeah. You can if you're short of breath or the blue, but you gotta get a doctor if you like to order We have that with your license. If they're blue, you need to give them all. Oh I gotta wait for that order. No, they're gonna die in front of you. Yeah, you can do CPR, but I'm just saying they need oxygen, they're blue. You give it to them without a what? Because who's, who's blue? Smurfs. We ain't blue. <laughs> if the patient's blue, what do they need? So you go wait for the doctor to tell you? What's bluish discoloration called? They won't say blue. They'll say the patient's cyanotic. So what do they want you to do? No. They can be blue and be breathing and got a pulse. They want you to put them on. Because if they're blue, they lack. I'm not saying they won't be cyanotic in your code, but I didn't say they didn't have a pulse and didn't have, they weren't breathing. I just said they were what? They were how going? Because that's how they're going to test you. You put them on what? Oxygen, because we're not supposed to be what? And that's a quick visual. Someone's blue, they need what? All right, so 126 is showing you the different uh, cylinder markings. 127, the reducing valve. Then you're going to see the boron gauge down there. You see the pins on 127 at the bottom. And what's the pin alignment for oxygen? Air. So if I got an air gauge, it's not going to fit on there, is it? Is the alignment. What's the safety system for the wall outlet? Then we go over to 128, we call that a torque tube, sometimes called a flow. Well, what's it regulate? that regulate pressure? Flow? That's what I'm talking about. I don't need too much either, Mr. Boyd, now. I'm just trying to say you know what I'm talking about. That's going to regulate the flow. So when you turn that little valve, this is called a needle valve, and it's going to open and allow gas to flow in there. So if you're on two, see that two? You want that float in the center of the line. Not above it, not below it. You want it right, see that float right there? You want it sitting right there in the middle of that line. There it is right there. Torque tube or flow meter. All right. And it's going to adjust the what? Flow. That's what's called a flow meter.
if you look at that wind drop there, what do you see? What type of hose is on there? What color are they? So I could turn that dial and get what? 40? So what am I missing? See what I'm doing? See the wind drop? which it, uh, oxygen can no longer remain a liquid is what? What's that number? It's an electron. Negative. It's cold. What is the number?
What they do, they do what we call a hydrostatic test. So they'll put that cylinder in water. And they overfill it by five thirds. So if that wall, that cylinder is weak, it's going to what? It's going to move. And it's going to displace what? Water. That's what it's called. Hydro static. Yeah. Hydro meaning what water? So then that zone away because that wall could become weakened. And when they fill it, you don't want to weaken what? No. So right wall. Right. Also, those cylinders are made with one piece of metal. It's not welded pieces of metal, it's one sheet of metal that they put a press through and it makes the cylinder to keep from uh, having leaks in, in the wheels, right? Are they all made of steel? Remember, I look to be AL, what's AL? Do you know when you picked it up? It's not here as heavy as steel. Now that would be on there, like double A or A A or on the metal. Right. <coughs> now would uh, you ever take a cylinder in an MRI suite? What's an MRI? Don't know what that is. It's not a CAT scan. Magnetic. There you go. Rest of the uh, imaging. What are you thinking to do this? When they first opened that one at Massachusetts University, before they ever had a patient, maintenance walked in with what? Tool belt though? It pulled that wrench out of his tool belt. That's how strong that magnet is. And threw it in the machine. Did you have one? And it cost a lot of yeah. money. He kept his job. Yeah. <laughs> but he got wrote up. Because what did he do? He walked in there. No. That magnet is that strong, y'all. It'll pull your earring. You'll feel your whole earlobe do this. If you have on fake earrings, it's not real gold. If it's real gold, oh, I'm serious. If it's real gold or real silver, it won't affect it. But if it's steel or metal, you know, fake gold, it will pull your whole earlobe. You'll feel it tugging at you and let you remind you to take it off. You have to take all your cell phones and stuff out. It'll, it'll destroy your cell phone, credit cards, all that beeper, stethoscope, everything has to come out before you enter into. And we have special ventilators that can right. go in there that are not made out of metal. That's it. So it'll be careful with your cylinder because it will pull that whole H tank and slam into the, and you can't stop it. Once it starts pulling, it's over. Right. So you couldn't take a metal bit. Yeah. 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 Sometimes ventilated patients have to go get a what? Things to consider in the hospital. Now, how would you supply oxygen to that ventilator? Now, the obvious departments have that in there. See where I'm going? You may be in the basement. Nuclear medicine, the bowels of the hospital. They haven't got what? Piped in. So, you might need your partner to bring what down? You're going to transport them. Bagging them with the knee. But when you get the vent down there, how are you going to power it? How are you going to give them that 60% oxygen? Not for that, because they would run out what? Real quick. Like that road trip, right? So you need one that has a lot more in it, because that ventilator is going to require a lot more what? Oxygen than this can provide. Because you can't be running down there every little bit, changing out the what? That's awesome. <laughs> okay, so what are we going to do 
through here, select the appropriate regulated flow meter for large and small cylinders. They have all outlets. I'm showing you that here. Demonstrate proper what? Practice. This is where I'm at. Alert to any what? Bystanders. Okay, verify the presence of a gastro lock or what? O ring or a washer. That's just a brand gas lock. That's what? And you're not going to use it on this one, you would on that. And then properly connect the regulator to the cylinder. Check to correct for any leaks. If it's leaking, it might be because you don't have it tight enough. It might be because you left the washer out. Or you didn't use this wrench and tighten it enough. And you'll know it once you open it, you're going to start leaking. Okay, opens the valve for gas delivery, reads the cylinder pressure, that's what I had to do, right? Identify the type of flow meter, determines if you're compensated or uncompensated. Now, I'm sure Mr. Carson went over that too. Compensated versus uncompensated source too. 98% of the time, they're going to be compensated. Okay? There's four ways to determine them. Look at the position of the needle valve. This is the needle valve. When I turn that, that allows gas to flow from the wall into here, and the float will go up or down. So if the needle valve is distal or after the float, it's compensated. So this would be a compensated. Okay, that's one way. Position of the needle valve. If the needle valve was back here, it would be uncompensated. Okay? You have your dial back here. Another way, read the label. It's going to tell you. Compensated or uncompensated. Another way, when I plug it into a 50 PSI source, the flow will jump up and drop. That's a compensator. Or if I've got a plug going out of it and I totally occlude it, put my thumb over it, that plug's going to drop to zero because what's coming out of it? Zero. On a non-compensated, the plug would stay up there like you're still what? Getting the... Okay, so it's not going to read accurately. Okay. Primarily, the uncompensated ones you'll see used in surgery. Anesthesiology. Right, but they like to test you on that too. Compensated versus uncompensated short tubes or flow tubes. Okay. And then number 14, what are you going to do? Determine the what? Length of So depending on the cylinder. These are the two main ones you're going to use, the H or the what? Depending on how much is in it, because what do you have? PSI, time cylinder, factor, and then depending on the flow. So if you've got it on two liters, or you got it on eight liters, which would last longer? So if I got 10 pounds, I'd have what? 3,000? If I 
I think they said something about well, what is the one when it's one cubic foot of liquid is 860 cubic feet of gaseous. Yeah. Okay. States of matter. Yeah. A liquid, like if I poured a, a liter of liquid oxygen in a beaker and it changed from one liter of liquid to be 860 liters of gas. States of matter. Just that on that liquid, it's pounds. If you want to know how much liquid you have left, it's how much it weighs. You take the pounds that it weighs times 344 and divide it by the liter flow. And that'll tell you how much time they have left on a liquid system. Pounds times 344 divided by liters per minute. My first right. To see you're converting how much you have in weight to gas. Multiply by three. You divide it by how much flow you got coming out. And that will tell you how that is. Okay? All right. Let's put a gauge on these cylinders. How about two of you at each cylinder? How's that sound? 